will be 22 in December. 16 overall pick by the Toronto Argonauts. Two touchdowns already here tonight. And fans continue to get a look at why Jim Barker is excited about this young man. Presence of mind, not just catching the football, but awareness of where those defenders are. Right on him, but still makes a miss. And Wright, plowing his way to the 45-yard line of the Montreal Alouettes. A big burst from Dwayne Wright. You just like his number. <laughs> And his first name. Uh, he, listen, he looks better wearing number 34 in double blue than I ever did. I think he just put up my career rushing total on that carry. <laughs> big curly back. Some quick feet. And the first down. Another quick hitter on the side. And uh, Mike Bradwell. Couldn't hang on. The beauty of the CFL, and we talked about uh, the idiosyncrasies of the game, but also your ability to find your moment and become a star. Think about Anthony Calvillo. I don't know if there are many people who thought when he came into the league that Anthony Calvillo would end up as the all-time leading passer. Well, I don't think a lot of people thought many great things would come out of a team practicing in a parking lot in, in Las Vegas. Vegas. The Las Vegas posse. And then it took a while. And then when he came to Montreal, started teaming with Kahu. Great things happened. Andre Dury. Such is football fate. Think about Anthony Calvillo getting your chance, getting a chance to play. And, and I go back to the Chad Owens story, which is quite remarkable. Again, just... An innocuous presence last year, last game of the regular season. Gets to play, plays a little bit in the preseason. Leaves Montreal, comes to Toronto, and starts changing the course of Argonaut history in their record books. I think football, more than any other sport, success has a lot to do with being in the right place at the right time, hooking up with a coach who appreciates your skills. You got to look at Ben Cahoon, who He's been in the right place in the right time a number of times with Anthony Calvillo. And the kick is up, and it is good. And Grant Shaw doing all the kicking today for the Argos. Extends the lead. Slip slap. Time now for our sack tally, brought to you by Purelater, tackling hunger across Canada. Check. The Toronto Argonauts, they're working on it. They're working on it. Andrew McPherson's been tough to catch as usual. Those Montreal Alouettes continue to be in the top half of the CFL in that department. Of course, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers likely to finish in the lead thanks to the dynamic duo of Philip Hunt and Odell Willis. The bookends. Well, they did so much. The Blue Bombers regroup, the retool. They're ready for next season, as do the Edmonton Eskimos. The two teams will be watching the postseason. Playoffs underway next weekend. East and West Division semifinals. Tim Maker brought down shy of his 30 yard line. Well, the nominees continue as we go through Dwayne Ford's favorites. <laughs> A couple of outstanding tackles, likely to be finalists for the league's outstanding offensive lineman award. Ben Archibald of the Calgary Stampeders, one of the mainstays as they went through some transition on their O-line, but just kept on ticking. And of course, big Josh Burke left tackle of the Montreal Alouettes won the nomination over perennial pick Scott Flory this year. Another guy who can't be overlooked by Ron Hage and Hamilton at the center position. He's done so much away from the field, but that O-line, kind of the anchor in Hamilton, and I, I know you don't want to get any of those big guys uh, <laughs> upset at you. That, that those aren't necessarily your favorites. It's just two of eight, right? Well, I, I'll tell you, I kind of like these guys to, to wind up as the as the two finalists. Marwan Hage, another terrific season mm -hmm. in Hamilton. You know, I usually give the tackles the edge over the inside guys. Sometimes it's a little, little tougher to do oh, what they right. do out in space. Here's that O line again, minus Scott Flory today. McPherson, afforded lots of time. 
Another steamboat, another steamboat. That's a fly, and it is picked off by Lin J. Shell. Argonauts, ball hawks with a pick and a 20 point lead. Just over four minutes left in the third. Argonauts. Adrian McPherson scrambling. Couldn't find anything open. You see the job in coverage the Argos are doing. Lynn J. Shell came underneath. Pick up INT number four on the season. Many moments. Third quarter. Great toss here. Dalton Bell looking for Brandon Rideau. And we've seen that Good, strong, accurate arm from Dalton Bell a couple of times here tonight. Ball was floating up there, and Brandon Rideau will chase it down. Turned around. Certainly catchable. Well, there was the inconsistency catching the football that ultimately cost Brandon Rideau full-time employment in the Argo lineup. He used to start... That slot, right. that spot was eventually taken over by Reggie McNeil. Second and ten, Bell. That time nowhere near the intended target. And Leroy Van has been returning here tonight. Also playing some in the secondary. That ball caroming off of Van. So once again, the Argos will kick it away. And you know something? They're going to try this. They're going to try a field goal here. 51 yards. Oh, well, Grandshaw's Grant got the wind, and I mean, and he certainly got the leg. A couple of 50 yarders earlier in this season. The danger, though, looks in the end zone if you miss. It is up. It is good. Grandshaw. Buries one from 51. And the Argos continue to reap the rewards of a strong 2010 Canadian draft. Grant Shaw was their second round pick in that draft. Well known in his college career as an all Canadian corner at University of Saskatchewan, but also an accomplished kicker. Hits that one from about 51. Well, Prefontaine, who was warming up before the ball game, and uh, Jim Barker obviously deciding to keep his left foot warm for next week. The veteran, one of the great clutch kickers as well, getting ready for that East Division semifinal next week. And of course, Prefontaine was with the Edmonton Eskimos out west. It will be the BC Lions and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The Riders did the Lions a big favor last night. Favor stop starting next week as the two teams renew acquaintances and the Calgary Stampeders wait in the wings. BC Lions took a great run after a 1 in 7 start. Clutch victory yesterday. Paul McCallum booting them to the win in Hamilton. It's going to be fun. And Wide, wide open, open. Wide, wide open this year. It is Leroy Van Pyle driven by Willie Pyle. Well, Tristan Black had the first shot at the tackle on this kick cover for the Argonauts. Van thought it might be clear sailing after he manages to dodge number five, but that turned him right into the path of Willie Pyle. <laughs> Under three to go, third quarter. Side and Evan McCullough, rookie DB. Right there to make the stop. Well, Evan McCullough, the Toronto Argonauts' top rookie. Defensive halfback. 
makes a quick quick break on the ball on this play. Just a couple steps, reads the action, ball's on the way, and he's closing. A year ago, Evan McCullough was stocking shelves in a box store and waiting for a call from someone, anyone. He was the outstanding rookie nominee for the Toronto Argonauts. He's making stops. Andrew Hawkins with another catch. Sandwiched right there as the Alouettes and Adrian McPherson continue to try to move this football. Well, a nice year of comebacks for the boys from James Madison. Evan McCullough, the Toronto Argonauts most outstanding rookie nominee. Another James Madison product. Clint Kent, a guy who was out of the CFL for the last couple of years after starting his career with Montreal, had a great comeback season this year for Winnipeg. Darren Diedrich. Again, the Alouettes will await the winner of the Hamilton Toronto East Division semifinal and the Argonauts, their outstanding player nominees this year, led by Corey Boyd. Gets a day off today. Well deserved. Yeah, Corey Boyd, a contender in the most outstanding player category. Kevin Iben, I think always worthy of consideration for top Canadian, likely battling Dave Stalla for those votes in the East. I think Chad Owens probably a lock to win the overall award for special teams. Knocked down the line of scrimmage. Eric Taylor in on that. You know, you saw Rob Murphy's name there, and Rob Murphy probably even admitted himself guilty of taking some undisciplined penalties over the last couple of seasons, particularly last year, his first in Toronto. Penalties way down for the Argos, including Rob Murphy this year. Yeah, Rob Murphy is just focused on playing football this He's still season. Nasty, oh, no, no, He's no, the nastiest, no question. And he, and he looks the part. But Rob Murphy, a two time most outstanding offensive lineman in the CFL, certainly back close to that form in 2010. Clock winding down here on third quarter. Six-yard kicks. Uh, we already talked about Anthony Calvillo and Ben Cahoon's a perennial candidate, of course, for the Montreal Alouettes. Again, nominated as most outstanding Canadian. And Josh Burke, the top lineman nominee for Montreal, a guy certainly in the running. Chip Cox, very strong contender as top defensive player and a couple of great CIS products. Mike Giffen has been a special teams warrior, the Queen's product. The guy who's been out of the lineup for a while, their best rookie, Marco Briette from the University of Montreal. Dawson Bell, again play action. Oh, wicked jolt there. Ejiro Kowali coming out of the backfield, normally plays on the other side of the football. Makes his first reception, but that was a painful one. Yeah, a guy who's usually listed as a defensive end really earns his paycheck as a special teams warrior for the Argos. They've given him, showed him in a couple of looks as a tight end fullback type of guy on, uh, on their offense. Final play, third quarter. Bell. Andre Dury makes the catch over the shoulder on the last play of the third quarter. It's been all Argos in this fine sponsor of the Canadian Football League. And the numbers really don't mean anything, <laughs> except the Toronto Argonauts have come up with a pretty good performance. I think if you want to talk about positives in this football game and, and things that this game does mean, how about the transformation of the Toronto Argonauts over the course of the last 12 months? And we talked earlier in this ball game about these two teams playing in the final game last season. Toronto Argonauts ultimately ended the season 3-15, and 15, didn't make the playoffs, and look disinterested in the final game of the season, a meaningless one. Night and day here with the Toronto Argonauts that you've seen. I think it, a change in the culture, courtesy of the arrival of Jim Barker and his coaching staff, a couple of key changes. But this is a team that, again, they find themselves in a supposedly meaningless game, but 
They're playing to win. Still. They're playing hard. And competing, absolutely. And again, a different culture, a different owner. Uh, again, with David Braley this year, Jim Barker comes in, uh, assumes command, and, and brings a different culture. Uh, certainly a winning one. Argos have a chance now, and looks very good that they'll finish the season at 500. Should the score stay this way, Dalton Bell. Go, 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 go. And a delay. Down, right. Bulldozes inside the 30-yard line, but also getting a chance in this final game to see what a Spencer Watt or a Dwayne Wright or some of these other players can do. And this is exactly what a game like this is meant to be. Well, you, you know, going back again to that game at the end of the, the 09 season, both teams played a lot of a lot of backups, rookies, guys who had been on their practice rosters, and there was a bit of a, the evaluation process for the future happening then. And you saw the depth as the Montreal Alouettes backups dominated the Toronto Argonauts. You kind of realized the Argos needed to improve their personnel and their overall depth, and we're seeing today that they did that. He was out of bounds. Well, Mark Tressman already has the yellow challenge flag in his hand. And it looked like he was out of bounds. And it certainly didn't have full possession as he juggles it here. One, two. And yeah, he's Yeah, if he catches that ball clean, he's got a touchdown, but the juggle cost him six. And I think there will be no doubt. As the Argos want to huddle up to get this convert done, but the yellow flag is already on the field here early in the fourth quarter, and Mark Tressman will challenge. Well, the Argos do their best to get the PA team, PAT team out there to kick before the flag can Mark come Rob down. Is challenging a ruling on the field of a catch. We'll review the play. You know, you talked about the change in culture, not only in Toronto, but think about the Eastern Division, with the exception of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, who had a lot of close games and very well could have changed their fortunes. Things have changed in the East. Um, it's not as lopsided as it has been the last few years. Let's face it, the, the Montreal Alouettes, frankly, have lived up to the moniker, the beast of the East. They were untouchable. No team in the East could rank with the Alouettes. This year, the word beatable really does exist because of the previous games this season and because of other teams improving. Yeah, absolutely. And taking nothing away from the Montreal Alouettes, who are still among the CFL's elite. But the Hamilton Tiger Cats, the Toronto Argonauts have closed the gap, and it shows in the games that they've played head-to-head -head with Montreal this season. And it, it's something that just comes with the territory when you're number one, when you're the defending champs. You get a bit of a target on your back, and beating you is what motivates others but also what motivates the way they go about building their teams again cfl command uh, taking a look at this but not really much to look at it appears certain that andre dury was out of bounds and once again glenn johnson with the verdict after review the ruling is an incomplete pass it's second down on the 29 yard line second and ten And all our focus on that play was on whether or not Andre Dury caught the ball before he went out of bounds. But how about the ball thrown by Dalton Bell there? Well-placed football. Mark Tressman era. The Alouettes have been very powerful. Grey Cup champions last year. Perennial powerhouse in the East. back in the Grey Cup this year. A lot to be decided over the next few weeks. Second down now. Bell again stands in. Mike Bradwell with a straight arm. And Mike Bradwell had his Spencer Watt moment last week when he found the end zone and getting some more touches this week. Yeah, Bradwell getting an opportunity to play in Chad Owen's spot as the wide side wide out. Great job here by the offensive line, spreading things out, opening up nice passing lane for Dalton Bell. And Bell continues to go to work. He's been impressive here in relief of Cleo Lemon today. 
You wonder too how much more time Dalton Bell will get before we might see Danny Brown again, the Canadian. Bell in trouble, throws it away, knocked down. And it is Ivan Brown. University of Saskatchewan product, fourth round pick of the Alouettes. Well, the Argos go with play action here. And Dalton Bell may wish that he had just handed this ball to Dwayne Wright. Watch how things open up up the middle right where Wright goes. But the pressure comes. Dalton Bell makes a good decision to throw this ball away. Make sure he throws it down low where no one can get to it. Good defensive effort from Ivan Brown. Getting some reps at the defensive end spot. Second down. There's the draw play this time for Wright. Swallowed up in the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go, and so the best the Argos can do here is three points to extend their lead to 30 to 4. Once again, it will be Grant Shaw. This kick will come from just inside the 25 yard line. Grant Shaw hit a couple of boomers with the wind in that third quarter. is off the upright. Kerplunk. Shop at Safeway. Swap your club card and play. Safeway million dollar touchdown to win. You could win a TomTom Tom XL 335S GPS device. Complete widescreen navigation that gives you the fastest route every time. Shop and play at Safeway. The season's best deals are at Chevrolet. Get up to $10,000 in cash credits, including up to $1,500 holiday bonus. Pick your Chevrolet and make no monthly payments for 90 days. Plus, get Smart Purchase Financing, the new flexible way to buy your Chevrolet. Or get 0% financing on select models. We'll take that one. The Chevrolet Season's Best Event. Hurry and pick yours today. Lars set the world record.